So a useful tool in um, in understanding how uh, um, our uh, if statements work is using a uh, flow charting. So here in our, this if demo, if we look at this, we have you know we have uh, in that you know from a pseudocode perspective is um, get text from user and then um, if text is hello is not hello in this case well just to keep it yeah is not hello say you didn't say hello and then print thank you can we flow chart this out well there's a lot of uh, tools for doing visualization one you by Microsoft is Visio um, as a student you can download this if you um, uh, from yours from uh, uh, Azure for students and um, one of the options is this uh, basic flow chart one. So I'm going to use that flowchart template. And there's several different ways that this looks. Um, and let's see what would work well. I guess this one will work well. Actually, I want a new one, so I'm going to, I don't want one that started off with stuff in it. So I'm going to go back and uh, pick a flow chart. I'm going to pick this empty one so that it's empty. And the way flow charting works is uh, you have all these symbols to start. And typically with flow charting, we start with a, a start emblem and it's not unusual to type the word start in there. Try to get this centered up to where I'm at. There we go. We put start and then, um, you know, if we looked at this code, it says, please enter a statement. So. we would get input from user and then and we connect these up usually and actually you can kind of uh, hit those arrows and uh, you can pick what you want so the next thing is a decision and it's if text equals hello or does not equal hello. So um, we can represent that in this diagram is And with these, you then have two branches. And so we put two branches out. And this one we will say is true. And this one we'll say is false. Now, we kind of have some neg double negativing going on here. Because is it true that it's not hello is really what this one is. Um, you'll get used to doing double, triple, quadruple negatives in programming. But if it's true. Um, that, it, that it was not hello. We're going to say, you did not say hello. And then, and actually in this case, um, I'm going to get rid of it here because with this one, we, with the false, it just doesn't do anything. So really what ends up happening is this one connects 
if it's true, it loops in through, says this, and then if not, it just goes down here and says, thank you for using my program. Now, normally you would do this first. Um, I'm just doing it here to show you how, how flowcharting works. And then we usually have an end block here. And so this is a flowchart of the of the program. We come in, we ask, we get input from the user. If the text does not equal hello, we said you did not say hello. And then we say thank you for using my program. Get rid of that little extra thing. And so you can use this to kind of visualize what's happening. Some people really like flowcharting, others just do pseudocode. I tend to just use pseudocode to do this process. But if you like this visual representation of your of the flow of your code, then it works very nicely. And there's a lot of different symbols here that mean different things. Uh, some are for output, some are for input. But really, you can do almost all your flow charting, which is square boxes for actions and di diamonds for decisions. And the diamonds usually have a true or false or yes or no output um, uh, to 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 uh, show their um the the way they're they're, they're set up um let's try flow charting a uh i'm going to save this and let's see so maybe we'll do this else demo here so you know the um So the pseudocode for this would be this, and then So, you know, if those are the main blocks of this piece of code. And I'll make another flow chart. And let's see, you know, I suppose one way we could do this is like this so that we could see the code side by side with it. And, um, Put in my start. No, this isn't really programming, isn't really required, but um, I demonstrated this just to show the flow. And then this might be something that uh, um, you might find useful. So um, uh, and there's no right or wrong on how you write these things out necessarily. Um, I mean, there's there is some things that are clear or not more clear, but um, you know the, the basically. So here now we have an if if name is so if it's that, then what are we going to do? Well, um, if it's name Rob, then we're going to. Uh, And this one would be, tr tr that's true. And because this is an else, I usually like putting these off to the side. And let's see if we can get these all in here. Okay. And um, and often you're paraphrasing. You're not necessarily putting exactly what's going to show up in the the code. And so now what will happen is both of these are going to connect up to this statement. Which is at the end. So no matter which branch we go, 
we're going to go here. And so this false is actually the else. This true is actually this part here. So when you see an if else, you can think of it as a true false result where the where where the else ends up here. And this is different than the other one where it just fell through because when it fell through, no, um, there is no other, there's no extra action. This action here is only going to happen if this is false, as opposed to the other one where, um, you know, we didn't have this branch. So it's useful to look at uh, these flowcharts and, and see where the difference is with the uh, structure logically. And then we put our end block here just to say, just so it's easy for someone looking at this to see where to start looking through the flowchart and where it's going to end up. So that's another flowchart. And this is the shape of an else. You know, a regular if just drops straight through. An else tends to have a true and a false branch. So let me save that one. And then let's see. Let's um, look at the ELIF demo. And flow chart this one out. Again, I'll start with a start. And get a number from the user. So it's very similar, you know, we're going to And then let's see, we're gonna make a decision right off the bat. We're gonna say um, num greater than zero. And if it's greater than zero, we're going to say positive. Actually, and then with uh, ELIF, we have another logical test. So we're going to put another diamond and put in the condition for that one. And that one is uh, num less than zero. And then this will be negative. And then And then the else is just, so this is false here, and this is true here, and then this is false here. And with the else, there's no logical expression, it's just it goes straight here. So often what I do is I put these parallel. Um, if I can get this to shape the way I want to, there we go. I, I put them one after the other because then it kind of makes sense what's happening. So with false, we're going to say zero. And actually when it's output, a lot of times what you do is you just, rather than say print, you can just put um, quotes around what you have in here. And then it's clear that this is, this is probably being output to the screen. And so then now how do we wire this the rest of this up. Well, where does this go afterwards? Well, it's going to go to, um, oh, we don't have a good buy, so I'm gonna add that in here. Uh, and I usually do this so that it's clear where things are ending up. So, in fact, this is one way you can code, is you can be drawing stuff out and then coding on the side, um, if that helps you out.
for some people that just may add, they may not add a lot of clarity, so you don't have to do that. But you, you know, so here we're going to say goodbye. Put double quotes around it, indicate that it's output, and then these all are going to. In fact, I kind of want this to be. And how you arrange these, you know, it's just a matter of your preference. I kind of like this approach, though, because it kind of makes it clear. We have these conditions. If it hits this condition, it's going to go say positive and then say goodbye. If it hits this condition, it's going to say negative and then say goodbye. And then if it's none of those, it'll drop out to the zero and then say goodbye. And then we have our end of our program. So there's our flowchart for this, this program. So flowcharts are um, a great way to visualize how the logic is flowing through your program. Uh, most computer programmers, after a while, uh, you know, the, they're, they're a great le learning tool. Um, there used to be a time when all programs were fully flowcharted out, and that's how they documented them. But now programs have become so complicated, flowcharting them out can become kind of complex. So normally programmers just rely on writing pseudocode, often as comments like this, and then you put your code, you do this first, you've seen me do that where I write out the basic logic of my program and then I write my code between uh, the, um, the comments. Um, I really like the idea of putting my, 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 it's building my comments first by explaining the logic of what I'm doing and then putting my code between it. I think it, um, it really helps you break up the problem. And, um, you know, sometimes as a programmer, what will happen is you will, your mind will be jumping back and forth between different parts of the problem. So one of the purposes of flow charting and writing pseudocode is to just kind of get you to focus when you're writing your code on just one piece at a time. And you've seen how I'll write a piece of code and then test it, then write a little piece of code and test it, then write the next piece of code and test it. And if you do that, you'll find that you tend to go through the program one way. Because you're testing as you're going, you don't backtrack as often. And where you're going to find as a new programmer that you often have a lot of difficulty is in that backtracking and going backwards and forwards through the program process. If you can, if you can kind of learn to break your problem down and then go one way through the program, you'll find that you'll code a lot faster and it'll be a lot more enjoyable experience. And initially writing doing a few few flow charts either before you write the program or even after you write a program doing a flow chart for it might actually help you kind of be able to visualize a little better how the logic flow of the program works so it's a great learning tool to um, to understand the flow of your code and it won't take long after you do this a few times you realize, you know, I can kind of see what's going on, but it helps build that visualization. So anyway, Flowchart is a great tool. Um, there's the, Visio is available for free to students um, on um, uh, if you look up uh, Azure for students. If you search for free flowcharting, you'll find uh, a number of different applications that will give you. Um, different deals, sometimes, you know, very basic capabilities, but you don't really need that much complexity. So um, one is Lucidchart. These can be kind of nice because they can maybe uh, facilitate, um, they can facilitate uh, sharing with other people. You know, you can give them the link. And then here's an example, you know, they have like a little example on this one that shows, uh, and it works much the same way. You drag and drop and connect things up and uh, you can, in fact, they even give you a flow chart to learn how to, to, um, to use the flow chart. So, um, uh, so have fun with flow charting. Um, uh, it's a great way to think through processes. In fact, one way you can really exercise it is just take any process that you do normally, driving a car, doing some you know sort of art or building something and try to flowchart it 
and it will really help you uh, think through uh, the logic of making a program. Thank you.